It's called the Scary Black Ring UFO over Disney. Which one? This? Nice. That looks like something out of bleach. I don't know, everyone's recording it though. There's a transformer explosion. Is that right? I don't think it could just be aliens. We can't write it off. Smoke ring is a result of the firework display at the World of Color show. Well, bah humbug to you too. Yeah, I saw it, George. You gotta click on the vid at the bottom. The video that appears to show a Disneyland character misbehaving. I, I don't think... Whatever. Obtained by 10 News appears to it's probably not an alien, though. Character, the White Rabbit behaving badly by cursing and getting physical. 10 News recently broke the story of a lawsuit filed by a local family accusing the same character of refusing to hug four African-American children. And <laughs> investigator Michael Chen explains the video could I didn't expect that. Piece of evidence. <laughs> what a twist. The laughter you hear is coming from the father shooting this cell phone video during a June visit to Disneyland. After one daughter pulls on the tail of the white rabbit, his other daughter, 14-year-old Jocelyn, also takes a turn. Immediately, the rabbit follows her. Jocelyn Carlos says the rabbit held her by the arm and neck. He told me, don't you ever do that again, or I'm going to call security and tell your stupid friend to stop doing it, too. Moments later, you can hear her sister, Alexis, yelling. <laughs> he does, but the sisters say they hear these parting words. <laughs> the words are difficult to pick up. Listen again. <laughs> Jocelyn says she remembers. Damn, the, words the magic is ruined. He said, "Don't even start your with me." And then he turned around and. To be fair, though, don't yank on a fucking stranger's tail. Well, Carlos says they didn't complain for fear of getting kicked out. Recently, we told you about a Spring Valley family filing suit after they say the white rabbit during an August visit brushed off their sons and two other relatives to hug white and Asian children. The local family's attorney plans to what use the, the new video fuck? as evidence in the suit. It's a classic. Is it this? So it's the same. It's the same guy in the suit. And they they think they can get away with treating their um, guests really poorly. Some who watch this will say you were looking for a reaction and you got a reaction. Yeah, we didn't expect to get that type of reaction. It's unacceptable. These are professionals. They handle kids every day, all day. In a statement, Disney says this seems to be a blatant attempt by a lawyer to generate publicity for a case that oh, has no merit. They're fighting Anything back. All this video shows is a family of misbehaving guests deliberately provoking a character for their own malicious. True. That, that is what that video showed. If there were two different employees involved in the two rabbit incidents and the job status of those employees, Disney declined to comment, citing personnel matters. So we obviously heard the character speak. How unusual is that? I mean, very unusual. We yeah, that's that's a crime in and of itself. The same Disney character for 10 years. He said that was the number one cardinal rule that was never broken, and it was a fireable offense. Certainly. Well, okay, thank you. Interesting. I know you'll follow the case. Thank well, that was a lot more interesting than I gave that credit for. I wonder what happened to that guy. No, I, I bet it was... Well, I guess I don't know. He did say the same person played the same mascot for 10 years. But I just can't imagine, like, you have one person in this mascot costume forever? No way. There's no way they're going to be able to, like, survive the heat stroke for that long every single day. You'd have to cycle out employees. No shot. The suits have fans in them, too. I've heard that. I've never seen the fans in the suits, but I have heard that before. He was sitting like L from Death Note, I know. That is wild to sit like that in public. Thanks, Risa Bailey. What do you know about Disney adults? 
Not a ton, but what I do know is still frightening. Disney adults are on another level. That's some weird shit. These are some Irish. The ones that live and breathe Disney, that shit is unhinged. That's definitely some kind of mental thing. I don't... Eh, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and try and psychoanalyze the reason for being like an obsessed Disney adult. But it like there is a level to it where it is f- like frightening. Like the people that were like really excited about a Disney neighborhood, which actually just sounds like a fucking Jonestown situation waiting to happen. People that have the um, like the turbo seasonal pass and actually move to what is it Buena Vista in order to be as close to Disney as possible. These are some purple fox. Some people are obsessed with Star Wars shit as well. Yeah, but at this point, I feel like Disney's wiped their ass with Star Wars so viciously that even the most diehard Star Wars fans are jumping ship. Now it's just love for the OG. There's been a lot of good Star Wars coming out. That You have to be the first person to say that. The only thing good Star Wars that I've... And I, I still haven't fucking finished it, but it was good, is Andor. Mandalorian Season 2 I liked. Season 1 was better. I didn't watch Season 3. I just completely lost interest. And everything else in between has been terrible. Oh, I also didn't watch Visions. I forgot to watch Visions. Book of Boba Fett was fucking atrocious. I'll finish your statement for you. Book of Boba Fett was awful. I couldn't finish it. There's a bit of tea chan again in Jay. Oh, nice. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, Jay. That's that's not like obsession or anything. Disney bounding. I don't know what the fuck is Disney bounding. Sounds like imprinting from Twilight. <clears throat> Disney adults anger some online after they invent Disney bounding to avoid costume ban. I'm a Disney adult. I tried Disney bounding to fight costume ban. What the fuck is this? Oh my god, I'm... S- I keep accidentally clicking on Fox News and forgetting that they're an allow ads only type of service. Which I will never fucking do. They call their costume design choices Disney bounding. Style that encourages Disney fans to dress up in a non-costume outfit that draws on the color scheme, accessories, and even personality quirks of their favorite character. Oh, jinkies. As dressing in regular clothes that allude to a character. Most people don't want to wear a full-on costume to Disneyland, but it doesn't matter because you're not uh. allowed to dress in costume unless you're a child or unless it's during Disney's Halloween event season. After Disney banned guests over the age of 14 from wearing costumes in its parks, adults fans have turned to Disney bounding. Why is that not just a clear message that you just shouldn't be doing it in the first place? Oh, you're going to ban my ability to dress up as Remy from Ratatouille? Not on my watch. I'll find a loophole. Curated a list of clothing combinations that allow adults to dress like Barbie, Princess Jasmine, and other iconic Disney characters without breaking park rules. That is so embarrassing. Thanks for the resub name. Just go to the park and enjoy it without needing to feel like you have to look like Barbie or Princess Jasmine there. I want to make it clear though. It's not just Disney. Anyone that is obsessed over some corporation or whatever, to this degree, is always going to be fucking cringe and creepy. It's just for some reason, well, not for some reason, Disney is a powerhouse uh, media empire. But it is just, Disney is one that most have latched onto for this obsession. But it is not just Disney. It is literally anything. You like Yu-Gi-Oh. Brother, do do you see me donning a... a a yugi bounding where i've got my hair spiked up and colored red with a trench coat and a dual disc no there's a difference i like Yu-Gi-Oh. i collect the cards but like if if i didn't tell you that you wouldn't even know (laughs) like at all that is so different there's a difference between liking something engaging with it 
and making it your whole personal identity to obsess over it. Well, we can see the cards in the background of your stream. You fucking swine, that's Pokemon. It's not even Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, no, it is. I forgot you see the frames too. Doesn't matter. You see, if I tilt the camera more to the left, you wouldn't even know unless I told you. Why does it matter? Oh, it really doesn't. It's actually such a trivial thing. It's just, I think, obsession over any type of corporate enterprise is just weird. Well, I guess... Weird and sad kind of in conglomeration. Because they don't actually care about the people who engage with the art. It's all just a money-making machine for them to exploit. So it just feels like so... I don't know. Sad. To make it a part of your personal identity on a corporation as soulless as like a Disney property. Or any franchise for that matter, really. It's not just Disney. That's just the biggest one. I think the resub Alex and the Bits Tichon and Josh. And the resub Samantha. There's a difference between having a hobby and making it your lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. The consumers don't care about the corporation, they care about the story they're based on. I don't know why I'm defending Disney peeps. I mean, you're also not wrong, though. Yeah, the stories, I, I mean, I get how they get there, right? A Disney story growing up touches you, uh, tugs on your heartstrings, it becomes like a part of, like, what formed your <laughs> childhood years. I get that. But making it your whole identity isn't really doing you any favors or the property itself. I, I just think obsession on anything is bad, no matter what. I don't think there is a good obsession. Even something that's generally deemed healthy, like an obsession with working out, can also be bad. 